Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we will begin our lesson with problem number 59. But before we continue with this problem, problem number 59, it is important, it is vital, it is crucial, it is absolutely essential that you have watched the previous video where we solved problem number 56, 57 and 58. That's where the story began. This is a continuation of it. This is the fourth video in the series of the, it is the fourth one in the series of four videos. 56, we did problem number 56 where we did the simplest scenario, simplest possible scenario, the one next to that was a little bit more complicated. And the last problem we did yesterday, number 58, was even more so. And today we'll do one more in the series. Here's the problem. We have a college. We are told that in this college we have a total of T students. We have a total of T students. We are told that F of them are freshmen, S of them are sophomore, J of them are juniors. The question is, and the rest of them are seniors. Sophomore, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. F S T, sorry, F S J, and the rest of them are seniors. The question is very simple, very straightforward. The question simply is, what is the excess of the number of students who are not seniors compared to the ones who are? One more time, what is the excess of the number of students? who are not seniors compared to the ones who are. This is how the problem will be phrased in the exam. It doesn't matter which exam you're preparing for, whether you're studying for SAT or SAT or GRE or GMAT or TES or HESES. In all of these exams, the wording is very formal, very intimidating. Your job is to be able to understand what is being asked and translate that into simple terms. What does it say in, in, in a more straightforward language? What is the excess of the number of students who are what is the excess of the number of students who are? That's another way of saying, this is a very formal way of saying. How many more students? How many more students? How many more students are? That's it. How many more students are not seniors in this college? In this college, how many how many more students are not seniors? compared to the ones who are. How many more students are not seniors compared to the ones who are? Another way of saying the same thing would be, what is the excess of the number of students who are not seniors compared to the ones who are? What, how many more students are not seniors compared to the ones who are? Let's find out, shall we? Tell you what, why don't we pause the video, why don't you pause the video, solve the problem yourself, watch, watch these three videos in the previous, uh, these three examples, three, three problems, 56, 57, 58 in the previous video, and do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do, will do together in a few seconds time, okay? We'll get out of your way, and I'll give you a few seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. All right. So how many students are not seniors compared to the ones who are? Well, let's, let's find out first how many students are not seniors. The number of students, number of students, who are not seniors. How many students who are not seniors? Well, that, that's good. That'll be the number of people who are freshmen the number of people who are sophomore and the number of people who are juniors. This is how many students in the college, these are, these are the number of students in the college campus who are not seniors. Okay, this is a very simple scenario. We don't have any graduate students. We don't have any other, any other complications. They fall in the strict four categories. They are either freshmen, sophomore, junior, or seniors. So this is how many people we have who are not seniors. Let's find out the number of people who are seniors. Number of people Who, who are seniors. And the number of people who are seniors would have to be the total number of students that we have minus, minus the number of people who are not seniors, which is this right here. As I told you already twice, 
I'm not going into too much details because I'm assuming that you have watched the previous three videos. So this represents the number of people who are, number of people who are seniors, number of people who are seniors. If it helps you, if it makes if it, if it makes your life easier, you could plug in numbers here if you like. Let's plug in numbers if you like. Let's pretend there are 100, 100 freshmen, 200 sophomore, and three other juniors. And let's pretend that we have a total of 1,000 students. If we have a total of 1,000 students, and if we have a 100 freshmen, 200 juniors, 300, 100 freshmen, 200 sophomore, 300 juniors, then there are 600 students who are who would qualify as the ones who are not seniors. These people are not seniors. 600 of them. We have 1,000 total. So how many of them are seniors? Well, it's going to be 1,000 1, minus 600. 400, as you can see, 1,000 minus 600. So number of students who are not seniors, number of students who are seniors. Question is, how many more students are not seniors? This is how many people are not seniors compared to the ones who are. That's simply this quantity minus this quantity. That's it. We have it. We are done. I'm going to raise the numbers now. This quantity, which is this, minus this quantity. Just like yesterday, just like in the previous example. For example, number 58, this is 59. Just like in the previous example, it's the exact same scenario. F plus S plus J minus this quantity, N minus F plus J. If you open the front end, we're going to end up with F plus S plus J minus N, and this minus and this minus will equal positive, F plus S plus J. F plus S plus J and F plus S plus J, these are the same quantities. So we could write this as 2 times F plus S plus J minus N. There we go. There is your final answer. This is how many students we have. This is how many students we have who are, who are not seniors compared to the ones who are. And how many seniors did we say we had? We had 400 seniors based on the numbers we plugged in. We had 400 seniors. Where is it? Seniors. We had 400 seniors, we said. We had a total of 1,000. Okay, listen carefully. We had a total of 1,000. The question is, how many, how many more students? How many more students are not seniors compared to the ones who are? There are 400 seniors. There are 600 not seniors. So how many people are there who are? How many more people are there who are not seniors compared to the numbers who are? The answer is 200. Because there are 600 students who are not seniors, there are 400 who are, so there are 200 more students compared to the number of seniors. This answer better give us 200. Let's see if it does or not. 2 times F plus S, we said was 2, plus 300. That's 600. 600 times 2 is 1,200. 1,200 minus N, which we said was 1,000, as you can see, 100 plus 200 plus 300 is 600 plus times 2 is 1200 minus 1000 is exactly 200. That tells us that this answer is correct. The final answer is 2 times F plus S plus J minus the N. Do you feel like doing one more? Let's do one more completely unrelated, some, a different topic, okay? Let's, let's break the monotony of this thing, the last four problems. Let's do something different. Let's do something different. An airplane, we are told, an airplane traveled. A distance of eighteen thousand kilometers. Eighteen thousand kilometers in edge hours. We are told that we have an airplane that traveled eighteen thousand kilometers in edge hours. Question is, what is what is its speed 
in kilometers per second. What is the speed in kilometers per second? Very straightforward problem. We know that in h hours, should, should we put this on the top? In h hours, we traveled 18,000 kilometers. But we don't want hours. The question is how many kilometers per second? So h hours is same as 3,600 times h seconds traveled in this is how many seconds we took to travel 18,000 kilometers. If this is how many seconds we took to travel 18,000 kilometers in one second, in one second, in one second we will travel 18,000 divided by 3,600 times h kilometers. That's our final answer. We need to simplify this thing. We need to simplify this thing. Let's divide top and bottom by. Let's divide top and bottom by 100. So this goes away. Two zeros go away. Let's divide top and bottom by 18. 18 divided by 36 divided by 18 is 2. And this 18 goes away. Don't forget we still have this 0 here. So we end up with a 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the final answer is 5 over h. 5 over h kilometers per second. That's it, 5 over h kilometers per second. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I did not verify the answer, you do it yourself. Okay, bye now.